Alright guys, how's it going? I'm going to start this video by saying that some of you may be a little bit disappointed that this isn't a Zen video. In all honesty, the Zen news last week took me a little bit by surprise, and I was actually planning to do one or two graphics card videos instead. And what's more, I am also expecting more information on Zen this week, and hopefully a lot more details as well. So I've decided to wait until this week before taking a real look at Zen. So in the meantime, I've decided to do one or two little clarification videos, pretty much based around the kind of things that I've been getting asked a lot on the channel. After I did the NVIDIA showdown, Pascal vs Maxwell at the same clocks and the same flops, that was when I put the 980 Ti up against the 1080. Ever since then, I've had one or two people consistently ask me to do the same on AMD hardware, comparing Polaris to Tonga. And after the RX 470 launched, we then had a graphics card that had the exact same number of shaders, 2048, as the R9 380X. So now a clock to clock, shader versus shader comparison looked an awful lot easier. The simple fact of the matter is, I do not have that card. I do not have the R9 380X and it's just not worth getting hold of one for that one video, but I knew it wouldn't be long before somebody did. And lo and behold, computer base, they've gone ahead and done this comparison with the RX 470 up against the R9 380X and also the older R9 280X, which also has the same 2048 shaders. It's just got slightly different configuration elsewhere and only three gigabytes of memory. But as you'll see, it's a pretty interesting comparison. Now the big issue here was, of course, in my own testing on the NVIDIA cards, I showed that there was no real difference between Pascal and Maxwell at the same teraflops, while AMD, on the other hand, were claiming up to 15% improvement per compute unit. In other words, we should see in some games roughly 15% improvement on the RX 470 compared to the R9 380X at the same clock speed. Right, so just taking a quick look at the test methodology. All the cards were clocked to 1040 MHz. So the 280X and the 380X were overclocked, while the RX 470 was underclocked. As I already mentioned, the R9 280X has a special case with the memory. It's got 3 GB of VRAM instead of 4 GB on the other two cards. It also has a 384-bit wide memory bus. But in the end, it's not that difficult to get the same bandwidth, and this is the key here. In order to get the same memory bandwidth on a larger memory bus, you just need to underclock the memory a bit more, and that's what they've done. It's not exact, the 280X still has a little bit more memory bandwidth, but it's not enough to really see a difference there. The really interesting one is of course the 380X. This is GCN Generation 3, whereas the 280X is GCN Generation 1. We really want to know if Polaris is actually up to 15% faster than the 380X. You should note that on the slide, AMD did compare it to the R9 290, which is GCN Generation 2, so obviously just that little bit older. The 290 and the 290X, for example, did not have any memory compression technologies whatsoever, unlike the 380X, which did. So that may account for some of the differences. Now, they also compared an RX 480 to the RX 470, which was very interesting in fact, but I'll talk about that at the end of this video. But otherwise, we've effectively got two identically spec'd cards, the R9 380X and the RX 470, going head to head. Right, so looking at the benchmarks, Polaris vs Tonga vs Tahiti. The same clock speed comparison. 24 games tested, all the way from Anno 2205 to XCOM 2. There's obviously an awful lot of data in this chart, but it's really just to show one thing, that in every single game that was tested, Polaris was ahead of Tonga, at the same clock speeds, and as you might expect, it was even further ahead of Tahiti. Now, if we just look at Polaris versus Tonga, 470 versus the 380X at the same flops, we can now see how much percent faster Polaris is on a game per game basis. It does vary quite a bit, with barely any improvement being seen in games like Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Hitman, which is slightly surprising, the Talos Principle and the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, all showing under 4% improvement in performance. At the other end of the scale, we have The Witcher 3, which is 15% faster, that magical 15% which AMD claimed up to. Other games where Polaris does well includes Metal Gear Solid 5, The Division, and Ashes of the Singularity. On average, over those 24 games, Polaris is 6.5% faster than Tonga. Looking at Polaris vs Tahiti, we see even bigger swings, with games like Dirt Rally, Far Cry Primal, again the Talos Principle, 
only showing single digit percentage gains. But once again we see a massive increase in The Witcher 3, over 40% faster in that game. This one looks pretty simple to figure out though because we know that The Witcher 3 uses quite a lot of tessellation and as you might expect AMD has been improving their tessellation performance throughout the GCN revisions. There are quite a few games where Polaris is over 20% faster than Tahiti and is in fact a massive 18.1% faster overall. When you think about it that is actually quite a lot. The same number of shaders, pretty much the same bandwidth and yet you're looking at a nearly 20% improvement, mostly on architecture. Now moving back over to computer base, we see they are saying similar things. The more tessellation, the greater the performance difference. For example, in Fallout 4, 25% uplift for Polaris, that's versus Tahiti of course, not Tonga. Rise of the Tomb Raider, The Division and The Witcher 3, all of which are Games Works titles. So overall, I think it's fair enough to say that Given that AMD's comparison was against the R9 290, which is the second generation GCN, then their claims of up to 15%, and it is up to 15%, seems pretty reasonable. There's always going to be a little bit of marketing in there, but they did hit that 15% number in The Witcher 3, and they also got close on one or two other occasions. Another thing I want to say is, all these benchmarks were taking at 1080p, so there will be games with CPU bottlenecks, for example, this could be what's happening in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, where there was hardly any difference at all. Other games like Hitman? It's possible here that in Hitman, Polaris may still not have been optimised for asynchronous compute, whereas Tonga probably has. So perhaps we will see improvements there with drivers over time as well, and possibly even in Total War Warhammer as well. But really that's the thing here, Polaris is the newest architecture and we should expect to see more performance improvements through better drivers. So overall really I think it's a combination of things. Polaris has got that slightly more efficient front end, it has the primitive discard accelerator, it's got that larger level 2 cache and of course has the more evolved memory compression algorithms. And one or two little things really can add up, 15% is a lot. Maybe the average of 6.5% isn't all that impressive, but over time we could easily be looking at an average of 10% plus. That is really good from an architectural point of view, especially when you consider the reduction in the power usage that used to plague the earlier GCN cards. We know that in terms of efficiency Nvidia is still clearly in the lead, but this level of architectural improvement could really help AMD going forward, assuming that they are able to fix other issues, for example the large gap in clock speeds, but that one remains to be seen. At the beginning I also said that Computerbase had compared an RX 480 to an RX 470. Both 8GB cards with the same clock speed and the same memory speed, and surprisingly the difference was only found at 4.3%. Now the RX 480 has 12.5% more shaders, that's 2304 compared to 2048. So this 4.3% lead is rather small compared to the theoretical advantage that the RX 480 should have. Computerbase reckons that this is down to the RX 480 being constrained by a lack of balance bandwidth, which is something that I am going to test next. I've never been a big believer in bandwidth being an issue, especially not on AMD cards. And if you think about it, with the exact same bandwidth, the GTX 1070 does not appear to be having those kind of issues. But this is one I'm going to test out. I'm going to do a bunch of benchmarks on the RX 480 at stock values and then I'm going to overclock the memory in order to see if this bandwidth thing really is an issue. So look out for that one soon as obviously that could be very important when it comes to Vega, which will of course have HBM2 memory, and should therefore not have any issue whatsoever with bandwidth. Right, so that'll do it for this one. I just wanted to clear this one up, so maybe people will stop asking me to do the test myself, and it seems rather clear that AMD has done reasonably well and has achieved up to 15% improvement with Polaris over previous GCN revisions. And I'll catch you later guys.